So currently just 1% of the world holds more than two thirds of all new wealth created since 2020. That's Hold on a moment, 99% of the population? That includes me and most likely you sitting on the other side watching this video. This is Anthea Spinks, Director of Programs at Oxfam Australia, and she's talking about the unequal distribution of wealth across the globe. I'm Aurelia St. Clair, and this is Sirius, a series where we interview experts who work to change the systems that keep people in poverty, because we know that inequality is no accident. Hey, Anthea. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Aurelia. Can you tell me a bit more about the distribution of wealth across the globe? Yeah, very alarmingly actually, since 2020, that wealth concentration has increased um, in terms of who's holding that. So currently just 1% of the world holds more than two thirds of all new wealth created since 2020. That's staggering, astronomical. Basically it means that 99% um, of the world's population um, are you know, suffering the inequality that we're talking about. Now, who are these people, these billionaires that hold all this wealth? Well, not surprisingly, we're not them. So <laughs> who are these billionaires? It's predominantly uh, white men in the global north. Not exclusively, but that's predominantly where that wealth has been captured. Is there anything we can do about this? Oh, there most certainly is, because we can actually make changes to the system. So for example, less than four cents in every dollar of revenue is actually coming from things like a wealth tax. So we could put a wealth tax in place on these multi-millionaires and billionaires. Um, and if we were to do that, we could raise globally $1.7 trillion in additional revenue, right? So I don't know how many zeros are on that number. Hold on. We also know that more than half of the world's billionaires live in places where there is no inheritance tax. So let's assume you're said billionaire, you give me said billion dollars as you know, my inheritance, I pay no tax on that. So that's essentially allowing us to create a new generation of the aristocracy coming off this you know, really, really small concentration of wealth. Uh, bringing that back maybe into the Australian context, we can um, raise close to $30 billion additional revenue a year just by putting a wealth tax on just the Australian multimillionaires and billionaires. This animation will clear things up for us. And the other um, element of that, I think, is to sort of say, well, why do we have such structural inequality? We have structural inequality because we have broken economic systems. So again, if we want to fix those economic systems, we can. It will mean that you've got to do that in you know, conjunction with other, other, other places. You can't just do one thing in Australia and not something else where the tax havens are. Mm -hmm. um, but we know there's actually movement behind this. So, um, what is maybe surprising to some is that actually some of these mega rich individuals themselves are actually acknowledging the system's broken. Mm. So last year, um, you know, we had over a hundred millionaires say they're happy to pay more. Quite surprising when you think about it. Yeah. Um, but if, if even the super rich are acknowledging the system's broken, then, you know, it's so obvious that we can do something. And the more people see that the system is broken, the better. Yeah. That's right, because we can change that system. It's important because for the first time in 25 years, poverty globally is increasing. You know, I've spent my whole career working in this space and that is actually really distressing, that no matter what we've been doing over the last decades, we're seeing poverty increase rather than decrease. So what can we here in Australia right now do to support this change? So there's a really simple thing that the Australian government can do. Um, and therefore we can call on our government to do that um, and that is to implement a wealth tax in Australia um, and that could raise you know close to 30 billion dollars additional revenue. Um, we can also scrap what are commonly called the stage three tax cuts. Sounds a bit boring but essentially what that's doing is um, cutting taxes for the very rich in Australia. Mm -hmm. So by cutting those taxes we're actually saying this system's fine we can go for it. Scrap those raise the wealth tax, problem solved. So simple. So simple. But you know, we have to be calling for that. We have to be as individuals in this country and as citizens globally, we have to be asking for a change to this system that is so um, blatantly keeping people in poverty and inequality. Thank you so much, Anthea, for taking the time to teach me and everyone watching about what we can do to change the systems. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you're keen to learn more, watch out for our other videos where we will be talking about tackling the climate crisis, equality for people of all genders and our work with the First Peoples of Australia. So here are the credits. <laughs> There's probably possums on the roof.